the update for the uh, book of lists? Yes, yes, I got it. Yes, thank you so much. I understood the deadline uh, uh, in February, so I will. Well, oh, we'll, talk, we'll talk. Translation. Uh, maybe we can talk later. In, in truth? Yeah. Okay. Well, we have a minute to go. Uh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> yes, I, I got the file. Thank you so much, Venerable Somatia. I will try to work. Is that a reasonable amount of time for you? Is, is, is Valentine's Day a reasonable amount of time for you? Yes, yes, for sure. I, I, I will start to work on it. Okay. Yeah. Well, here we are. Where's Mike? There's Mike. <clears throat> Mike, you want to lead us in the mandala, please? Sashi Buki Jukshing Metab Trong Re Rabbling Shin Yin Degen Padi Sange Shin Du Mik Te Wargi Jokun Nam Dak Shing La Dru Idam Guru Ratna Mandala Kam Niryatayami. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, compassion, knowledge, and strength, the Dharma, the enlightened side of truth, <coughs> and the song to the community of realized beings. From the virtuous merit I create, from the practice of giving with the understanding of emptiness, moral discipline with the understanding of emptiness, Patience with the understanding of emptiness, joy separate with the understanding of emptiness, concentration and wisdom. May I attain the state of a Buddha for the benefit of all living beings. I go for refuge in time and light to the Buddha, compassion, knowledge, and strength, the Dharma, the enlightened side of truth, and the song of the community of realized beings. From the virtuous merit I create, from the practice of giving with the understanding of emptiness, Moral discipline with the understanding of emptiness, patience with the understanding of emptiness, joyous effort with the understanding of emptiness, concentration and wisdom. May I attain the state of a Buddha for the benefit of all living beings. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, compassion, knowledge, and strength, the Dharma, the enlightened side of truth, and the Sangha, the community of realized beings. From the virtuous merit I create from the practice of giving with the understanding of emptiness, moral discipline with the understanding of emptiness, patience with the understanding of emptiness, joyous effort with the understanding of emptiness, concentration and wisdom, I will attain the state of a Buddha for the benefit of all living beings. Okay, welcome everybody to class. Let's see. Well, we don't have many people here today. Hmm. Oh, well. Uh, let's start with uh, rejoicing. Who's uh, Svetlana here up first? <clears throat> yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I'd like um, to rejoice that uh, today, like, I decided uh, to share in social media some uh uh, resources uh, about wisdom so uh, I, I started uh, to create links for that uh, in link tree and uh, uh, call it fertilize your success uh, to monitor like meditation practice studies serving uh, to teachers to other people yoga and six times book and uh, uh, systematize different links so I'd like to rejoice in efforts to share wisdom and dedicate it that every living being can study these teachings. Very good. Thank you for doing that. That's going to assure you have access to what you need, <clears throat> not only the Dharma, but what you need in, in life to, to succeed. So that's one thing we need to remember with 
or rejoicing. It just doesn't apply to Dharma. It applies to the world, your world in general. Okay. Daria, what do you have to rejoice in? Good evening there. Ervan Musmati, uh, I, I re rejoiced. Uh, I could uh, see sun, I could uh, feel uh, wind, and uh, yesterday I helped uh, some parents, mother uh, with her daughters, daughter. Uh, she uh, have mental retarded daughter and um, uh, she 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 need help uh, because daughter go to school must go to school but uh, uh, they have a choice if she stay home and study yes and uh, go to school and i tried to write some uh, sentences for these uh, daughters and she go to school not uh, this correct correction school was but uh, she don't stay at home and i'm very rejoice and i rejoice this girl girl yesterday feels very bad and she's um, uh, stomach take and uh, she's sit with me and next day, when I saw these um, children, she feel better and uh, she was uh, happy and mother happy too. And I'm rejoiced. I, I can help. Good. Thank you. That means you're going to get the need, the support you need when you're not doing well in the future. That's great. Okay. Katarina. <clears throat> <clears throat> Katrina, do you have something to rejoice in? Hello. Um, Hi. Uh, I need to translate, I think. Я радуюсь тому, когда получалось вспоминать когда что-то шло не так, вспоминать, откуда это происходит. И when something go wrong, and I uh, remember that, um, that it uh, it's for me, <laughs> for my seats, uh, you И я радуюсь тому, что когда какие-то проблемы происходили, я надеюсь, что я мне получалось не сердиться, когда было сложно их решить. И я надеюсь, что получится превратить из проблемы, сделать возможность э, зафиксировать их лучше, чем было до того. Такие, как поломка техники, допустим, смена. Your practice can can uh, occur in many different ways, and it's very important to do what you did to see problems as uh, opportunities to practice. So, excellent. Now my screen just did something weird. There we go. Okay, Cornelia. So thank you, Venerable I rejoice that I sit down and meditate in the morning despite not having the best concentration. 
Sometimes it's not so easy to stop thoughts of appointments for the following day coming up. <laughs> I take care not to disturb others in the rest so that my practice improves. Good. I had, uh, I'm had. i going to be faced with, <clears throat> I've restarted my meditation practice as per this course, and that means I need to, <laughs> on Tuesdays and Fridays, I teach at five in the morning. So I'm going to have to get up at four to do my practice. And that's going to be a stretch. That's, that's going to be a stretch. But <clears throat> <clears throat> even if it's <clears throat> not for the full length of time, I'm going to, I'm trying now to always sit first thing in the morning and, and get as much of a meditation done as I can on those kind of days. So it felt good this morning to get up and do that. I, uh, I was really pleased with myself. So good. Keep it up. Okay. Who's next? Layla. Good morning. Um, Today, I'm rejoicing on um, the, I guess, because of past karma, the, the, the reaping of the benefits of being able to assess what has been going on, my, my past patterns a bit more. I've noticed these last few days, um, less judgment when it comes to um when it comes to myself, just more tenderness. Um, and with that, the ability to watch things a bit more closely without feeling so emotional about, um, about things. And it got me to such a beautiful, honest place. And I just feel like I'm rejoicing in everything done in the past to help me get here in, in and 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 wishing for more of of that for myself and others good well that's that's we're going to talk about that a little bit later in class but but we'll, so we'll talk about that in a bit i just have to comment i love your hair Thank you. I think that's just an extraordinary head of hair. I wow. love it. It took a long time to to love it. <laughs> well. But I love it now, too. <laughs> wow. I can't imagine trying to comb that. Oh, uh, you uh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Olga. Hello, everyone. Uh, I rejoice that my nephew... He lives in Costa Rica, he lives in Mexico, but uh, he turned one year yesterday. So we kind of celebrate that he's turning one year. Good. So you're in Mexico and he's in Costa Rica? Yeah. Where, where are you in Mexico, Mexico City? No, I am in Guadalajara. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see who's next here, Mike. Hey, um, yeah, I just wanted to rejoice. I've noticed that, um, you know, I have, a, I have someone that works with me and, uh, you know, she's around when I take classes and, um, you know, I try to kind of maintain this like Buddhist worldview throughout the day. And, uh, you know, when we're in conversation, I try to like really look at things through a Buddhist um like lens um mm -hmm. and and go through if she's having like problems or something that's stressing her out like trying to explain things through this uh this way that we look at the world um and the other day i noticed that i was i was like complaining about some problem or i was saying something and she starts telling me how how getting frustrated isn't gonna isn't is only going to create more frustration in my future 
and and I like I like I, my jaw dropped, you know, and I'm like, wait, what is going on here? Like I'm usually the one saying this to you, and uh, so it it was just you know, and I just wanted to rejoice um, for her and and to rejoice that um, you know the Dharma is is powerful that it it can it can be spread just by you know. She she doesn't study the Dharma. She doesn't have any interest in Buddhism. But um, you know, just from being around it, just from me practicing this, um, someone else is improving their life. Um, yeah. So I just I think it's awesome. No, I that's really sweet. I think I that just really warms my heart that uh, you're you're doing that and you're doing it in such a way that it impacts. Because you could be trying to to demonstrate, like you were saying, it could just be going on deaf ears. But obviously, something you said um, resonated with her. And who knows, maybe down the road she'll want to start studying. But that's really, that's very sweet. Okay, I don't see anybody else that I think I caught everybody. Okay, so today we're going to go over the last class again, plus the uh, the end of the uh, problems of meditation. Going to try and go through it again. I I struggle with what we're talking about is the quality of the mind, and it's it's hard to. Uh, to dis to describe the quality of the mind, but we're gonna we're gonna try again. So, but before we do that, we need to have the quiz question. I'd like someone to tell me what the five problems of meditation are. I think we did the first three last time. Last yeah, but oh, um. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Okay, the 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 first three. Yeah. Um, laziness, forgetting the instructions, but with that it means more the object of the meditation, uh, having it slip your mind, and then um, uh, the mind dullness and agitation. Right. And what were the, what were the four antidotes for laziness? Should I go for it or? Sure. Well, let's have Olga. Olga? Uh, faith that I can and I will learn to meditate, think on the benefits, and recognize that I have the ability. Right. So you, you have faith that it's necessary. I mean, the whole point of meditation is to develop the tool to see emptiness directly. So if you don't want to see emptiness directly, don't bother meditating. But if you do want to see emptiness directly, have the faith that learning to meditate is going to get you there. And then when you have the faith, you want it. And to want it, you need the effort. And if you make the effort, it's like, um, I was trying to think of an analogy last night with my wife. Um, Well, this is going to sound weird, but when I was building our the structures at Diamond Mountain, I had, and this is going to sound weird, I had a favorite hammer. Now, a ham, hammer is just a basic tool, but that hammer, I picked it up, and it just felt perfect in my hand. So it was like I could do anything with that, that tool. And that was that's how I think of practiced ease. When you pick something up and it fits, um, I found a, a what we think was a, a stone tool uh, in, in the river bed at Diamond Mountain from the Indian, uh, when the Indians occupied the, the land. I picked up this, this rock with which had chipped edges and it just felt like it had been in my hand forever. So that practice ease is the comfort of knowing you yes you you know meditation's a tool you need you you have faith that if you learn to meditate you'll get your goal 
you want to, you put in the effort, and now it's just not even a problem. You want to go and sit and meditate. So, we need to remember that it's not blind faith. It's more like admiration. You're attracted to doing it because you see the benefit coming from it. It's like, well, it's another example. Well, if you're dieting, if you want to lose weight, the way to lose weight is to watch the cal caloric intake of what you eat. So every time you don't eat something of high, like a snack, then you, you basically are developing the practice ease of not eating excessively and you can lose weight. You slip into the idea of just not snacking. My problem is I like to snack. And when I'm on a diet, I ate a little too much Christmas food. So I'm trying to lose a few pounds. And when I go buy something I normally would snack on and don't don't take it, I just smile to myself and say, you know how to lose the weight and you're following that. And I take, uh, that makes me pretty happy. So, We've talked about karma and emptiness a couple of times on the idea of the two sides of the same coin. So you can't talk about karma without talking about emptiness. And the way I do that, and this, this is part of the faith, because if we don't have faith in karma and emptiness, there's no point in, in trying to meditate and reach the direct perception of emptiness. So, if you ever go to a teaching on karma and they don't talk about emptiness, then that's not a very good teaching, or vice versa. If they don't talk, if they talk about emptiness and not karma, because they're two sides of the same coin. You need to remember this, and this is something you need to, I, I talk to myself about constantly. You've got to remember that you don't want to say it's my karma, but you want to say it's my karma. So I had, we've had, my wife and I have had many students that say, well, it's my karma, but in this case, I can do it. It's my karma, but I can do this. I can do that. You should always be thinking it's your karma. So it's my karma. To, if I want help in the future, I need to help others. So it's my karma so. Now, the way I like to work with it in English, my karma so, S-O, sounds the same as my karma so, S-O-W, which is to sow seeds. Now, I'm not sure if the, what's the difference between, in German, Cornelia? What's the difference in uh, the word for so, S-O-W, versus so, uh, like planting seeds? No? Sorry, I, I do not really understand. Okay. When you, when, you, when you plant seeds, you sow them. And in English, that's S-O-W. But it sounds like the word S-O which is, so I do this, so I do that. Doesn't? Okay. Well, how about in Spanish? What's the difference between, what are the two words, S-O and S-O-W? Por lo tanto, eh, y sembrar. Okay. So that's, I can't do the same thing. In English, they sound the same, but they're two different words. And I guess in most other languages, they're, they're, they're two different words and, and sound like two different words. Okay. Well, the other thing I like to think about constantly, and this has been brought up in many of the, the rejoicings today, the idea of it's your past is your present and the present is your future. What 
you did in the past is what's ripening now in the present. And what's right, what you do in the present is what's going to ripen in the future. So what can we do about the past? Very little. But we can react in the present in the way we want to, to have our future be the, the way we want it to be. So for my illness, I was inconveniencing people in the past that's come to me in the present as Parkinson's. If I don't want Parkinson's in my next life or lives, I need to be go out of my way to help other people and not inconvenience them. And that that goes from large. We have a tendency to look for the big karmic event and making that seemingly is the most powerful, but we know that. Uh, a deed multiplies, the karma from a deed multiplies, doubles every day. So even little tiny inconveniences uh, will manifest as big inconveniences unless we look at it and think, well, this is a small inconvenience, but it's potent. And I need to be careful not to ignore it and then have it grow. So laziness, I think I think the other thing I really like about this this idea of faith and laziness, not wanting to meditate, is I really feel good when I I think, well, I, I'll put it off. I'll do it after class. And then I stop and I go, no, I'm supposed to meditate every day at the same time. That's got to be the first thing I do. And I catch myself and I don't be lazy. So, so reward yourself. Be glad when you overcome the laziness. You want the ability, the second one, when you want the ability to meditate single-pointedly, not only to see emptiness directly, but it's also very useful in daily life, uh, being able to focus your attention on what you're doing and really do do what you're doing well instead of just haphazardly. The effort, if we want to do something, if I wanted to learn how to ice skate, well, I want to learn how to play the drums. That's actually something I want to learn just because I think it'll be good for my hand-eye coordination with Parkinson's. But if I want to learn to play the drums, I have to practice it. I have to work hard at it. It's just not going to come naturally. And so that, that reflects on, on how I'm going to get my meditation going again. I need to work hard on it. I need to make it a serious part of my day instead of um, get it done. That brings up the subject. You hear people talk about they did their practice this morning. That's wrong. Your practice is 24-7. You did your morning practice. You did your meditation practice. But to say you did your practice, you've done your practice in the morning, that kind of implies the rest of the day you're not thinking about it. So when someone asks how your practice went, you say your morning practice, you had a good sit, whatever, you memorized something, but it's 24 seven. There's no part of your day where you're making karma that doesn't count. And practice these, What? Oh, volleyball. I used to play, uh, I played collegiate volley power volleyball. And when I was first learning, my wife, lovely wife, was a setter in college. And so I learned to play volleyball with her. And when you practice and practice and practice the various kinds of sets, then you get into a game, a match, and it would all come together. Everything would work well. You'd play well. But that came from 
having faith and knowing how to how to practice properly, uh, wanting to do better, making the effort to do better, and it all came together with a very fluid and uh, fun playing. Um, and it, well, it can be a complicated sport. So that was number one, laziness. Number two was forgetting the instruction. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Just remember, remember the instruction. It's important not to jump between objects. If we're watching our breath, then you, you find yourself not being able to count 10 breaths. Instead of going, well, I'll try something else. You, you stay focused on that object. Mental dullness and agitation. This is the part I want to try and explain a little bit better. It's difficult to do. Geshe says dullness is the worst enemy of meditators because it's easily taken for progress, mistaken for progress. I'm not sure I, I don't see that as a problem for me. We need to investigate three aspects of the mind, three qualities of the mind uh, in this for mental dullness and agitation. Fixation, holding the object in our minds, clarity, how alert and bright, the level of attention and intensity, intensity of the clarity. So my wife and I were talking about this, trying to use, get an example last night. And I came up with one, but I keep thinking of the details. And so I'm going to try and explain it to you and see if this works any better. But first of all, fixation is being interested in the object. Clarity is curiosity about the object. Interested, it's a quality of the mind. Curiosity is a quality of the mind. Intensity, fascination is a quality of the mind. So if I'm watching a football game and I have a bunch of paperwork I need to organize, then my fixation on the paperwork is I'm interested in organizing the paperwork. So that's my fixation. The clarity is I'm curious about what I need to organize. Where is all of the material? Do I have the right folders or on my computer? And intensity is the fascination with actually doing it. Now, agitation, or just doing this kind of out of sequence, agitation would be I'm hearing the football game and oh, my computer just went nuts. There we go. I hear the football game in the background and it's, it's, they're, they're cheering. So that agitation in that sense would be a distraction. My mind's thinking about going to listen to the, the football game when my object that I'm really working on is organizing these papers. So it's it's a distraction. My mind could go to it. And if it goes to it, then I've, that's agita obvious agita agitation. And that's something I don't want. So if I'm listening and I, the dullness would be, I'm beginning to, I look at all the material I'm trying to organize and I can't figure out how to get started organizing it. So I start to lose interest in organizing it. I'm not interested in the game. That would be agitation. I'm, I'm beginning to lose interest in the details of what I'm doing. If I have fixation, clarity, and intensity, I'm interested in what I'm doing. I'm looking at the, I'm figuring out how to organize it. And I'm looking 
I'm making sure what I'm organizing is properly uh, put in the proper folders. It's really hard to describe the quality of the mind. So I don't know if that helps any, but it's, it makes as much sense to me as the example of holding a cup. Geshe talks about holding a cup at all is fixation. Holding it loosely is fixation with clarity and holding it tightly is fixation with clarity and intensity. So remember, when we're talking about clarity, it's not how clear the picture is. It's how clear and alert your mind is. So the clarity is, for me, in my example, the clarity is curiosity. I've got all this material I need to organize. And if I'm really interested, if I have good clarity, then I'm, I want to organize it. If my clarity is bad, then I'm ambivalent. I'm more interested in listening to the game. So, with mental dullness, the uh, the problem with mental dullness is not taking action. So the obvious antidote would be to take action. For dullness, you tighten up your concentration. Pull your mind up and increase your clarity and intensity. Watching a movie that's a movie that's sort of boring. I don't know if any of you have seen The English Patient. That was one of the most boring films I've ever watched. So when I'm watching a movie like that, I'm thinking about just about anything but the movie. So that would be dullness. I'm watching a movie, but I'm not attentive to the movie. Now, if it's Gladiator or Stardust, I'm watching it very intently because I'm interested in the subject. I'm interested in the details. So my fixation is watching the movie. My clarity is trying to understand the scene. And the intensity is how may perhaps my emotion for that particular scene. The antidote for agitation is to bring the mind down, shift to another object. Well, we're trying not to shift to another object. Antidote for agitation to me would be watching, knowing you're about to lose your object because of the agitation and just pulling your mind back. So, for instance, this morning, I needed to get offerings ready for the white Tara soak that we did before class. And I knew I had all these offerings to get ready. And part of my mind, before I sat to meditate, I said, I should go and get the, the offerings lined up and ready for the for the soak. And then I thought, if you start doing that, you're going to find another reason to do something else and something else. And then the soak, eight o'clock will come by and you won't have gotten your meditation done. So I took care of the agitation part before meditation by simply sitting and doing my sit before I got distracted. So I tend to do that with my meditation. That's why I don't meditate at, uh, at the end of the day because I will have taken everything at the end of the day and tried to assess it versus at the beginning of the day I haven't done any of those things. I'm not I'm not thinking about how I'm going to do things. Um, well, it's like, like this is another kind of off the wall analogy, but well, I'm the cook in the house and I prepare 
dinner about five minutes before. I open the refrigerator, see what's in there, and make dinner based on that. So I don't I don't have to think about what recipe I'm I'm going to to use because I use recipes as ideas, not as actually follow. But okay, so we're going on to the. No. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. My computer's acting up. Okay, the last one. So you got dullness and agitation. The fourth problem is not taking action when you have dullness and agitation. So the obvious antidote to that is to take action. The fifth one is taking action when you don't need to. I've never experienced that one myself. So let's, let's do the breath meditation again. So get yourself comfortable. This will be about five minutes. Get yourself comfortable. Back straight. Head relaxed, mouth, face relaxed, maybe a slight smile. Lips are relaxed, eyes are closed. Tongue is at the roof of your mouth. Not pressed, just in a natural position. Shoulders level. No matter how you sit, you want to get in the habit of sitting so that you can extend the amount of time you're going to be sitting. <clears throat> if you need to prop your knees up because you're sitting cross-legged, there's nothing wrong with propping up your knees. The key is to get into a comfortable position. Okay. Now I'll do the seven preliminaries quickly. With my body, speech, and mind, humbly I prostrate. So you envision your heart teacher, whoever you're using as your the, the guide for this meditation. See them about a full-length prostration away from you at eye level. See them as three-dimensional. They're smiling at you, happy that you're trying to meditate. You offer your practice. Something good you did today. Now think of something that you did that you did that wasn't so good. <clears throat> think how you're not going to repeat that again. You're going to try hard not to do that again. <clears throat> Now think of something you've seen somebody else do and rejoice in the fact they did you saw someone do something good. <clears throat> and 
then ask your teachers to stay <clears throat> and to turn the wheel of Dharma. <clears throat> and dedicate this so that all <clears throat> beings that are trying to learn how to meditate will learn to meditate and succeed in their meditation practice. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to start. I want you to breathe in, exhale, and then in is one breath. I want you to count your breath. And we're going to do this for five minutes. Try and have a slow inhale, a pause, a slow exhale, pause. You're not holding your breath. You're just slowing your breath down. So here we go.
Okay, that's five minutes. How'd everybody do? How many, how'd you do, Olga? 32. 32 in five minutes? Yeah. Wow, so that's six, you're breathing six times a minute. That's wonderful. 55, well, one, what you can do is, uh, did I see, Layla, did you say you had 13 breaths? Yeah, I've been, um, I did the homework assignment a few times as well, and I'm always in between um, two or three breaths per minute. Wow. Um. <laughs> wow, that's it, very impressive. It's like, um, it's, I do about 10 slow counts in and 10 slow counts out per wow. breath. Um, well. I did one counting and one without counting. Mm -hmm. and while counting the 10 counts in per breath and 10 counts out, I did about um, um, two breaths per minute. So it was 11 breaths in five minutes. Wow. And then without, without counting, it was 14 breaths in five minutes. My hat is off to you. I, I've tried to do, I got down to four once, but... <laughs> Um, the idea is to, we don't want to use breath as an object of meditation, but it's to begin with, we're using it just to get feel for what's distracting you from it. Um, that you get a chance to experience dullness and agitation. So I'm down to about six per minute. So, okay. So please do this again for the, till next class. Uh, take five minutes. If you want to, um, get, a, get your, your phone and set it up and just try breathing more slowly. And you'll see that in 10 seconds, you can do an in-breath and out-breath. Then with the, the stopwatch, see what it feels like to try and get that down to four. And you'll find if you if you work at it, you'll find that you can get down to four very easily. Now, what's the point of doing this? It's to, to learn to focus on your object, your breath, or whatever your object is and stay focused on it. So. That's about all I have for today. Um, well, here's, here's an analogy I wanted to share with you. The process of meditation is like driving a car. Most roads are not perfectly straight and you're constantly adjusting the steering, the speed and looking around at what is happening. So you're constantly adjusting, you're looking, you, you're adjusting your, your, the process by looking out for dullness and agitation, applying the antidotes. So steering would be trying to have the clarity and the fixation is you're driving. The clarity is you're trying to stay in the, in the lane and the intensity is trying to do it without having to make a lot of adjustments. <clears throat> okay, well, let's dedicate our practice for this morning. Okay, let me see. This is the dedication I use during the day when I've done something good, um, when I'm rejoicing and I want to dedicate the merit. 
May the precious Bodhi mind not yet born arise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. And I usually follow that with, may the source of benefit and goodness, the Dharma spread and expand. May the beings upholding the Dharma have excellent health. May the source of happiness and well-being for all embodied beings, the Dharma taught by the Buddhas, always increase. I'm just curious, how many of you are taking this course for credit? You're going to do the homeworks and quizzes and hand it in. Olga, Svetlana, Mike. Okay. Well, I'll try and do a better job of making sure we go over what's on the, the homework. The memorization <clears throat> isn't difficult, but I would like you to, <clears throat> to add the uh, this meditation on your breath. Okay. We'll see everybody next Tuesday. Have a good weekend. And thank you for the opportunity to teach. Bye-bye.